If we want to know who leaked the special counsel's long list of questions for the president, we need to ask, who stands to most to gain? Well, the former assistant to Bob Mueller blamed President Trump for the leak. But Trump blasted the leak himself in a tweet earlier today. A report in The Washington Post tonight, though, suggests that the leaked list may be a series of questions compiled by Trump attorney Jay Sekulow. It may have actually been a list of questions that the president's legal team believed Trump would be asked, kind of a moot court situation. Let's ask two top legal minds why they think the list was leaked. Former U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva, and former Whitewater Deputy Independent Counsel, Saul Weisenberg. Uh, Joe, let's start with you. I mean, the intrigue about who leaked what and who has motive. I mean, it's like Columbo here, Joe. But I actually, I actually don't care who leaked it. No. I think what's important is, is that these are clearly the types of questions that have been discussed between the president's team and Mr. Mueller. And the question is, what do these questions say? They say that the investigation is now lurching into territory protected by the constitutional privileges of the President of the United States, and that if Mueller, let's assume these questions are accurate, that this is what Mueller wants to ask. If they are, and if he insists on answers and will not accept a written answers and demands an interview, which the President rejects, and then Mueller insists on a subpoena, we are headed to a constitutional crisis because the president's not going to answer these questions under any set of circumstances. Saul, when I saw tonight uh, this report in the Washington Post about the presidential subpoena, you know, it takes, it takes kind of a lot to shock me these days in Washington, but uh, I took a couple of extra breaths there. Your reaction? Uh, I'm not sure. I saw the Post thing. Is there a presidential is the subpoena already issued to the president? No, it's just a, it's just apparently Mueller raised the possibility with the Trump legal team oh. reportedly. Well, I think Joe is absolutely right. Uh, if, if President Trump decides not to, an, not to sit in for an interview and answer these questions, and these are very broad questions that definitely raise issues of both executive privilege and separation of powers, if he declines to answer and, and Mueller issues a subpoena, uh, you know, it's not just a question of does Trump invoke the Fifth Amendment or go to the grand jury. He's going to go and litigate this issue. And here's something that is very interesting that I don't believe anybody has talked about. It, remember, in the Watergate years, you had U.S. versus Nixon, where the Supreme Court rejected President Nixon's blanket claims of executive privilege. But in that decision, they pointed out that Leon Jaworski, the special counsel, have been explicitly granted the power to contest executive privilege. I'm not sure Bob Mueller has the power under his appointment from Rod Rosenstein or under the regulation to go in and even challenge ex executive pri privilege. So there's a possible third way for the president to bottle this up in court Very on the executive privilege issue. Oh, I love that. Joe, um, that's fascinating. Any particular questions in this lengthy list yes. jumped out at you and why? Yes, the questions the putatively posed by Mueller about what were you thinking when you fired Comey? What were you thinking when you fired Flynn? The notion that a special counsel can intrude on the thinking process of a sitting president while he was going president firing a person that you have ultimate authority, unfettered, unreviewable authority to fire under the Constitution tells me one thing about Mueller. He has gone goofy. The, the question should not be answered under any set of circumstances. And I tell you something, I would litigate this to a fare thee well. These questions are sophomoric. Um, Saul, any particular questions that you have in mind uh, that would be especially problematic for this president to answer? I mean, I wouldn't, as a lawyer, I would not recommend that he do this interview under any circumstances. I didn't think so before, and I certainly don't think so now. Maybe some written answers, like, I, I, you know, yeah. I, but I, I, I mean, maybe so. a written... Maybe a poetry or a haiku I'd send back to <laughs> Mueller, but at this point, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be engaging with that group. Two, I, I agree with you. I didn't think he should go in before. Two that, I mean, you could pick any number of them. That two, two that struck me as particularly 
outrageous or almost humorous. One, why do you continue to criticize Jim Comey and Andrew McCabe? I mean, give me a break. You need to be, you need to ask that. That's rather obvious. And another one was, why did you hold, uh, you know, Jeff Sessions, Attorney General Sessions resigna resignation in abeyance, I think until May 31st? And who did you discuss it with? Again, as Joe points out, this goes into the heart of executive decision making. And but it also shows something else. These questions show a couple of things. The Mueller people are outraged and livid at the president's criticisms of them, and they have a very dangerously broad view of obstruction of justice. Joe uh, and Saul, I want to play for you now a soundbite uh, from Rod Rosenstein today. He was at an event, and he was reacting to what he had heard and been reported about the Freedom Caucus potentially drawing up articles of impeachment against Rosenstein. This is what he said. They can't even resist leaking their own drafts. I just don't have anything to say about documents like that, uh, that nobody has the courage to put their name on uh, and that they leak in that way. But I can tell you, you know, there have been people who have been uh, uh, making threats privately and publicly uh, against me uh, for quite some time. And I think they should understand by now the Department of Justice is not going to be extorted. Joe. Well, I think Mr. Rosenstein has just shown his ignorance of the Constitution. Congress has demanded access to documents that it's entitled to under the Constitution pursuant to its oversight function. His refusal and obstructionism to turn over those documents has led to the confrontation, which is why they are considering his impeachment. If he thinks that's extortion, I suggest that he resign from office because he's clearly a legal incompetent. Yeah, Meadows is suggesting that basically today, Saul, that, I mean, this whole extortion. No, that's ridiculous. This extortion line. I mean, it's as, as, as the deputy attorney general to throw around the word extortion when you're already, sorry, under a cloud of, of concern at the very least because of some of the makeup of the, uh, of the prosecutors, what's happened with the text messages, the failure to he turn didn't over pick documents. The prosecutors. And it, he what? didn't pick the prosecutor. I mean, Rod Rosenstein I'm not talking didn't about, pick I'm talking the, about over the investigation oh. and for, in a prickly, it was like a Comey-esque, priggish, prickly manner to go, well, I can't believe it. I, mean, I just thought it just looked undignified. What it was very undignified. See, what you see is a man don't, who please has don't, always please don't had an please don't, def please don't defame Rod by comparing him to Comey. He, Look, you've had these, you've, you've had these, uh, these fights. What is it? You think it's okay for Trump to claim executive privilege vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Mueller, but it's not okay for uh, Rosenstein to talk uh, to resist Congress? That's been going on since Hector was a pup, and you know it. It's a back I don't and forth. I don't have any they problem with. They, he can they, resist Congress, they, but he cannot refuse to turn over documents that Congress has a right to see. But but here's the point: that use of the word extortion today was an absolute outrage on the part of a constitutional officer who is the deputy attorney general of the United States. That is unbecoming, and it's a fireable offense. He's not going to be fired no, because the isn't. president no, shouldn't it do it. You, Joe, and you think everything's an outrage. Everything outrage. Actually, actually, that's not true, Saul. And, and in fact, when the deputy attorney general of the United States uses the word extortion for Congress seeking documents it's entitled to and, under yeah. oversight, that is outrageous. Yeah. So, so all I'll say is, look, the only reason they ever Grow turned up, over the Rod. the only reason they ever turned over the documents is because they were about to be slapped with contempt of Congress. That they had to go to that level to get the documents that they're entitled to get under their normal constitutional oversight obligation. It's their Rod's obligation. Go, Rod's going to you know get what, what he Laura, wanted. Rod Laura, wanted Laura, to fight. Laura, He's going to get it. You know it. what? The, the president... The president actually is is higher up than Rod Rosenstein. It's an amazing thing in our system of government. At any time in the last six months, the president could have picked up the phone and told Rod yeah, Rosenstein. Yeah, we got it. We got instead it. Of, instead him. of tweeting, yeah, yeah. no, no, right, not get... fired him. He could have said, Rod, turn that stuff over, and then Rod could have even said, Oh, yeah, said, that would have worked. No, no, well, no, no, no. He's been told. Oh, come he's on. He's been told. That's the ridiculous. The president has been told. He cannot communicate with the no, Justice no, no. Department uh, yeah. by Don McGahn, right, the White House. Yeah, counsel. we're out of town. We're going to run to black. We're going to run to black. I don't guys. care what Don McGahn does. He's obviously not helping right. the president. Guys, thank, thank you both. You're right. He would have been creamed politically and PR wise by the press and so forth, and he was advised not to do that.